This is KGW News at 5. And right now at 5 o'clock, Governor Brown is willing to bet you will get a COVID shot if you also get a chance to win a million dollars. Oregon is about to enter the COVID lottery game. If you get a shot or you've already gotten a shot, you will automatically be entered to win. There are other incentives too, college scholarships and more cash prizes. Pat Doris explains. Everyone in Oregon who has a COVID shot is about to get a chance to win a million bucks. It's Oregon's latest attempt to motivate those who are not yet vaccinated by giving them a June 27th deadline to get the shot and be entered into the big bucks drawing. Governor Kate Brown made the announcement with a sales pitch. So if you've been waiting to get a vaccine or you just haven't gotten around to it yet, we're going to give you an extra incentive. How about a chance to win a million dollars? There will be no tickets to buy. All you have to do is get the COVID shot, and if you already have one, you are already entered. Here's how it will work. Everyone who gets the COVID shot through June 27th will have a number assigned to their shot record, and yes, the Oregon Health Authority knows who's been vaccinated. Those numbers will be fed into a special random number generating machine at the Oregon Lottery, which will spit out numbers for the winners. On June 28th, a winner will be picked for the million-dollar cash prize. Five other winners, who are 12 to 17 years old, will be picked for a $100,000 college scholarships. 36 other winners, one from each county, will be picked for $10,000 cash prizes. Take your shot, Oregon. Roll up your sleeves and get a chance to change your life. Do these incentives really work? Ashby Monk, director of the Stanford Global Project Center, who helped set up the COVID lottery game, says they absolutely work. Incentives that can change your life. Um, with big financial rewards, really do inspire large groups of people to take positive action. He expects 20 to 40 percent of those who have not gotten the shot yet to get it so they can qualify for the contest. Similar contests are underway in New York and Ohio, where the COVID lotteries boosted vaccinations by 28 percent. We had been seeing a downturn that continued, uh, fewer and fewer people getting vaccinated. It would appear at least that we have we have bottomed out on that, and there's some indication that we're certainly seeing an increase. Oregon leaders hope the cash prizes here will increase interest as well. The governor has said when 70 percent of adults are vaccinated, most COVID restrictions in Oregon will go away. So how are we doing? May 11th, when Governor Brown set the goal, the state needed to vaccinate another 430,000 people. Since then, roughly 141,000 new people got their first shot. That's roughly a third of the way to the goal leaving roughly 289,000. At the current rate of vaccination for new people, the goal could be reached in as little as 19 days, maybe as early as the second week in June. The OHA predicts it's more likely by the end of June. Governor Brown has said it is her top priority. Whether uh, uh, you rely on Pat Doris's math or not, if we can get uh, roughly 250,000 Oregonians vaccinated in the next couple of weeks, we can lift the safety protocol that the pandemic has forced upon us. And I think we are all looking forward to that. And that is where I am focused at this time. The OHA tells me the actual numbers may be even lower than my calculations since people who get their shots at federal places like the VA or tribal clinics are not counted. And while we're speaking of that, those names are also not forwarded to the OHA. So at this moment, you are not in the lottery. The state says they're working on correcting that. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. I always rely on Pat Doris's math. And today, five Oregon counties moved down to the lower risk category. They reached the threshold of 65% of residents 16 and older being vaccinated. Take a look at the map. Hood River, Lincoln, Benton, Deschutes, and Washington counties are all now at lower risk. Multnomah County does have vaccinated enough people there, but, but the county needed to submit an equity plan before being approved for the changes. That plan details how the county will close the gaps in vaccinating vulnerable people. Multnomah County hopes to move to lower risk by Wednesday.
Counties moving to lower risk can now allow a maximum of 50% capacity at restaurants, gyms and movie theaters and retail can go to 75% capacity. Several popular Oregon attractions will require masks whether you are vaccinated or not. Now that's going to include OMSI, the Oregon Zoo, the Portland Art Museum, the Oregon Coast Aquarium and Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, among some others. In a joint statement, the attraction said that they want their spaces to be welcoming for kids who aren't eligible for the vaccine yet, as well as for people who aren't able to get vaccinated. In Oregon, businesses that want to let people inside without a mask are supposed to ask for proof of vaccination. Some are pushing back hard on that requirement, and that includes the leaders of Yamhill County. As Catherine Cook reports, they're exploring how to stop people from asking others about their vaccine status. This information has been coming fast and furious. We heard from Yamhill County uh, Board of Commissioners uh, Chair Mary Starrett is on a mission. She wants the county to prohibit anyone from asking customers or employees about their vaccination status as a condition for allowing them inside without a mask. She's fighting the recent mandate set in place by the state. They did that after the CDC recommended fully vaccinated people can now go mask free in most public places. I mean, there should be no place in a free society for requiring private medical information as a condition of just operating in a free society. Starrett is asking the board to pass an ordinance making Yamhill County a sanctuary from so-called vaccine passports. The board met Thursday to discuss what that might look like and if it's even possible. County Council shared some concerns. If we adopt ordinances that that are in conflict with state law, we run the risk of, in the event of a claim, not having insurance coverage. Starrett suggested that that is not the biggest issue at stake. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's a risk, but somebody's got to say at some point enough is enough. I would rather go to the mat any day for standing up for those basic freedoms that we're now seeing destroyed at every turn. Many business owners are frustrated by the state placing the burden of checking for vaccine proof on them. Some have fielded threats from customers, others just a lot of frustration. We're not the vaccine police. Um, we trust our customers. And Haley Rogers owns Real Deals on Home Decor in McMinnville. She asks that people who haven't been vaccinated wear masks inside. Those who have been don't have to. Those policies are posted around the store and on social media. But as people walk in the door, we are not going to be checking for vaccination cards and checking it against their IDs. You know, we again, we're trusting that people are making the right choice for themselves and for others. Rogers says she's neutral on an ordinance that would ban people from asking about vaccine status. But what she would appreciate about it is a defined directive. With everything being so undefined, it makes our job much harder as a business owner in a pandemic that's already so hard. And this is really concerning to me. For at least the next week, the board will look at possible legal sticking points and what they might have to change in the draft before voting. But what I'd like to make sure happens at least is that county employees know they can come to work without being asked your papers, please. Something out of the Third Reich. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Kids and teenagers have missed out on so much during the pandemic. Parents in Silverton have been trying to get high school seniors an in-person graduation. After the district sent out a survey asking about graduation preferences, parents got antsy when they didn't hear anything. So they created this petition in an attempt to persuade the district. More than 700 people have signed it, saying they support an in-person graduation for the nearly 350 student senior class at Silverton High. The district responded today, saying based on its survey results, it will be holding in-person graduation with seniors split between two ceremonies. So my daughter's like, wait, so we don't even get to pick. I could be like with none of my friends. I'm like, well, you take what you can get. So for me, yeah, it's a win as far as we have an in-person graduation. But why couldn't they just do that one extra step and let the kids choose which one they wanted to go to? It's expected the graduation ceremonies will take place on June 10th outdoors on a school field. We are finally learning some more now, some details about a very disturbing case in Silverton. A teenager there was kidnapped and killed, and the suspect got into a shootout with police. Crystal Kumwe has the update. The Taylor family posted a tribute to their child on social media Wednesday, saying, quote, 
Molly Ali was granted her final desire of donating organs. The 17-year-old was airlifted last week from the scene of a shootout between law enforcement officers and a man suspected of kidnapping. Police say the suspect, Kenneth Peden III, kidnapped the teen, took off in a truck, and fired several shots at officers. When he finally stopped on Highway 214 near Silverton, police fired back, but say none of their shots struck the suspect or the teen. Court documents say at some point, Peden shot the teen, who died from the injuries at the hospital Wednesday. On Friday, Peden was charged with the teen's murder. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News.